that there will be those that will try to sneak in. There will be those that will try to be Christians or to join the Christian family without getting saved. They will try to bring their sin into the Christian family. Oh, dude, you mean like um, preachers in the pulpit who have done things that are ungodly, that are not Christian, like that, like that kind of thing? Because you guys, oh no, you wouldn't have anything like that going on, would you? Would you? And, and there wouldn't be preacher's wives going around behaving as if they're Christian. Are they? Have they? You know the truth, and yet you're trying to preach like this. You're the wolf. And you're part of a wolf pack that puts on their shepherd gear, that tries to, to blend in as one of the others. Look at me. I'm just like Jesus. They will try to justify themselves and say everything's okay when they haven't repented yet. They will try to put on a cloak of Christianity. Just a little unsolicited advice. Um, you guys have a conference coming up in April, right? I mean, I've seen the, the promotional video. So maybe do some backpedaling on all of this Bible thumping that you're doing, all this fire and brimstone and preaching and this is the way it is, this is the way it's supposed to be. And just take a chill pill, back up a bit, and think about what you're saying. Because, dude, people know things. We've been in the group. We know things. And you're coming out forceful like this, saying things, behaving in a way as if you're pure as the wind-driven snow. And uh, that has never been the case from the very beginning. When I think about the people who have been harmed by your group, really, truly, truly. And you know, People don't want to have anything to do with you people. You've hurt and broken up families. You treat marriages in that place. And I think little five-year-old girls playing with their Barbies um, actually sometimes have more fidelity than you people do. Because there are lots of broken marriages that had not one thing to do with infidelity at all. So step back, just step back. Maybe go take a walk around the block, think about things. and realize everything you are saying is an indictment against you personally and your group personally. Because you perpetrate these erroneous doctrines on people. You, you put burdens up upon them that you won't even lift a finger to give them some relief. And you just get up there and spit and holler and yell and scream, and this is how it's supposed to be. This is biblical. You, you pervert almost every scripture that you get in your hand, and you don't know how to preach love, so you mock it. You have that God is love written across every altar, every, not altar, uh, the podiums in your organization. Take them down. 
You don't know what love is. You don't know what love is. If you do, maybe it's time to show your hand. Let us see. And not that, not that conditional love stuff. I mean true, unconditional love. Love. The kind of love that you can feel when you're alone, that you can be wrapped and embraced in when no one's there. There's no one physical, physically there with you, but you feel it. When you're accepted by God, by faith. You don't have to be yelled at every single service. You don't even need those services. You're hurting people. And now you got this rah-rah session in there because you're angry. Because you're in defense mode. And you're going to make more little yous and more little... <laughs> yeah, that's a pun unintended. Little Y-O-U's and little E-W-E-S. And little Keckles and little Olsons and little Davises running around. And preacher's wives who just call women in the church Jezebel. Just so much love. So much love. There will be those uh, that the Bible even said, they're wolves in sheep's clothing. <laughs> 